Well, few seats are more important to Anthony Albanese's hopes of winning the next election than the electorate of Flynn in rural Queensland. The incumbent National Party stalwart, the LNP's Ken O'Dowd, is retiring, which is setting up a contest between Labor's candidate, a popular Gladstone mayor called Matt Burnett, and the LNP's candidate, cattle farmer and state MP Colin Boyce. Already one issue has emerged as a fault line in the battle for Flynn, which counts mining and agriculture as two of its biggest employers. And that issue, net zero. Matt Burnett, all for it. Colin Boyce, on the other hand, says it's a bad idea which will lower the standard of living. Colin Boyce joins me now. Colin, great to have you on the show. At least a, a dozen of your Liberal and National Party colleagues in Federal Parliament in Canberra, they think net zero is a goer. They don't really care how much it costs. They can't wait to sign up. And that the target must be agreed before the Glasgow Climate Summit later this year. Why are they wrong? Well, good evening, Peter, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me on the show. Why are they wrong? Because uh, the seat of Flynn in central Queensland, which I hope to represent, um, is the industrial beating heart of Australia. Uh, we are the electorate that is generating the income for Australia. We are heavily reliant on the mining and resource sector, the agricultural sector. Uh, the port city of Gladstone is an industrial port city with the CSG gas industry of Curtis Island. Uh, the Bourne Island alumina plant, the uh, QAL uh, alumina plant, uh, the smelter. Um, all of these industries are heavy carbon emitters. And what I want to know is if we're going to go down this net carbon uh, zero emissions rabbit hole, I want to know how much it's going to cost. I want to see some economic modelling on it. I want to see what it's going to cost these industries and how it's going to affect the people of Flynn. Tell me where the people of Flynn would be on this issue, do you think? Well, as I said, most people are, uh, are connected in one way, shape or form to agriculture, the mining and resource sector or, or heavy industry. Um, everybody is reliant on it. Uh, the, uh, you know, there's 8,800 uh, direct jobs employed in the mining sector. Uh, there were 70 million tonnes of coal exported from the port of Gladstone last financial year. Um, you know, it, it's a it, it's a shipping port city. Uh, the CSG gas industry is there, which is heavily reliant on coal-fired power. We have three coal-fired power stations in the Flynn Electric, Stanmore, Calloid and, uh, and Gladstone Power Stations. Now, if we're going to go down this net zero emissions, how is that going to affect the supply of uh, reliable baseload energy to heavy industry? Well, you're already a state MP, you're a cattle farmer. When you're out and about in the electorate, you're talking to people, how often do they raise the issue of net zero with you? Is it top of mind? And if it is, uh, we'll give me a sense of their reaction. If it's not, what are the other issues they're raising with you? Oh, look, um, zero net carbon emissions uh, uh, is obviously going to become uh, an election issue, I think, as we proceed closer and closer to an election date, uh, possibly next year. That is an unknown at this point in time. Uh, again, people want job security. They want uh, prosperity. Uh, the mining and resource sector is uh, currently experiencing um, record prices for commodities, as is uh, the agricultural sector. So people want, uh, you know, life security and job security. And, and you know, that's weighs heavily on their minds. You know, if the Prime Minister goes to Glasgow with net zero 2050 in his pocket, signed off by your would-be leader in Canberra, Barnaby Joyce, let's assume you get elected, Australia would be putting together a plan that includes changes to mining, changes to transport, very significant changes, obviously, to agriculture. But somewhere like New Zealand has carved agriculture out. So this is not a level playing field, is it? Oh, correct. And for countries like the UK and uh, the EU to procrastinate on about lowering their carbon emissions, it's all a smoke and mirrors argument. It is all hypocrisy on a grand scale. They have largely abandoned a lot of their manufacturing sector and sent it overseas to uh, places like China and India. Uh, they still import um, uh, vast quantities of their consumer goods, of their steel, their aluminum, metal products, all sorts of engineering products and so forth. And then for them to say that they have lowered their carbon emissions is 
just nonsense. Um, all they've done is shifted it from one side uh, of an economic equation to another. And for them to then point the finger at places like Australia uh, and demand that we further lower our carbon emissions, again, is nonsense. Australia is one of the few countries in the world that is meeting its carbon emissions agreements. Just before we go, I've only got just a, a quick tick, but have you raised this with the National Party leader? I know uh, I know uh, your Senator colleague, Matt Canavan, will be in your corner, but where's Barnaby Joyce on this? Uh, well, I haven't spoken directly with Barnaby Joyce on this. I know their position is, uh, is, not, uh, is not set and it's not clear at this point in time.